Leadership Preparation Webinar Series, Values-Based Leadership, Part 1. The Office of Leadership Development and School Improvement is comprised of an Executive Director reporting to the Assistant State Superintendent, Coordinators for School Improvement, Academic Improvement, and Leadership Development, as well as Leadership Specialists. Our office has three main goals, fostering the growth of effective leaders, ensuring valid and reliable evaluations, and raising the quality of education. We provide targeted professional learning experiences and resources to equip current and future leaders with the skills and knowledge required for successful school and district leadership. We oversee the development and implementation of Maryland's teacher and principal evaluation system. Training, guidance, and support is provided to local school systems in the implementation of fair and valid evaluations. Lastly, we provide customized professional learning experiences and support informed by data and grounded in effective practices to improve school performance. To earn continuing professional development credit, in order to receive one credit, you must view five webinars, including part one and part two. Additionally, you will complete three hours of experiences per webinar to include pre-work, participant guides with the webinar, and extension activities. In order to receive two CPD credits, you must watch all the webinars in this series, including part one and part two. Then you will complete three hours of experiences per webinar to include any pre-work, participant guides with the webinar, and extension activities. In order to submit your materials, please complete the Google form found in the description below the video. Meet the presenters. For this webinar, we partnered with Biza and Associates Consulting, LLC. Presenting today will be Melinda Biza and Lorna Klockengay. Let's review the expectations and logistics before we get started. Participants will become aware of your leadership story, understand the difference between values and vision, compare values, beliefs, and attitudes, and create leadership skills through the lens of values-based leadership. Some resources that you can find are the Participants Guidebook, Part 1 and 2, the Only True Leadership is Values-Based Leadership article, and all this can be found in the resource tab below. Now you'll need to reference the Values-Based Leadership Webinar Participants Guide, Part 1, as you work through this webinar. So here's our agenda for Part 1 series. You're going to be able to define leadership. You will understand the difference between values and vision. You're going to define values-based leadership while comparing values, beliefs, and attitudes. You're going to be familiar with leadership and self-awareness. And ultimately, you'll be creating your leadership story. Let's review the session outcomes. We're going to create your leadership story by defining leadership, understanding the difference between values and vision, while comparing values, vision, and attitudes that support values-based leadership. Now let's start by reading out the quote from John Maxwell. The real test of leadership isn't where you start, it's where you end up. Follow along on your participant's guide and complete this quote. The real test of leadership isn't where you start, it's where you end up. Now, why are you here today? Well, we're going to continue to develop leadership skills. So it's important to continue your leadership skills as a lifelong learner. We're going to develop. discuss the importance of leading by action and setting the example. Leadership is not about the role we hold in an organization. Rather, it is about the action we choose to take. It's not what you say, it's what you do. Actions speak louder than words. Now let's go back to the participants guide and ensure that you fill the sentence. Leadership is not about the role we hold in an organization. Rather, it is about the action we choose to take. It's not what you say, it's what you do. Actions speak louder than words. Now let's define leadership. In an eloquently crafted sentence, define leader 
or leadership based on your experience working in formal organizations and within systems such as your school system. Now, I'd like to give you about three minutes to complete this activity. Remember, you will define leader or leadership. Now, remember, you should have a definition for leader or leadership. Let's continue. So one definition of a leader might be this from Joel Barker. A leader is someone others follow to a place they could not or would not go themselves. Now, reflect on this definition and record what it means to you in the participant's guide. Wow, you are really getting this. Now let's keep going. Values before vision. Underlying a vision is a set of personally held values that should shape and direct all that goes before it. In education, we might call this a moral purpose. Having a clear set of values helps your employees understand what you stand for. Your company or organization values also give them guidance for the work and a sense of security. As a result, your employees or staff are more likely to make the right decisions. The decisions that help them achieve the company's vision and goals. Now take a couple of minutes and record on page two of the participants guide why it is important to have a set of personally held values that drive your vision. Fantastic, let's come together. I can already tell that the values that you've written down are going to be great to help you define your vision. Now let's keep going. VBL, so what is VBL? Values-based leadership. Why does it matter? I'd like you to watch the video for an introduction on what is values-based leadership. Let's think about that. What is it like where you work? What are the set of defined values for your school or district? Do they even exist? Are they spoken or unspoken? Let's take two minutes to jot down some thoughts on page two. Can you identify those values? Fantastic, let's come back together and let's clarify this even further. If we think about values that are spoken, they are considered clear and typically expressed in mission statements and produce consistency in work-related behaviors and decision-making in the employees and staff. Now, it is considered unclear if it creates a confusing environment and it makes it difficult for managers to operate. Often, a wide variety of behaviors is tolerated. Unspoken or unclear can often be found in organizations without mission statements, producing some uniformity in work-related behaviors in employees, although those are learned through observations. Unspoken or unclear values would include no organization realistically thriving in this environment. The majority of organizations have mission, vision, and value statements. Now, as you consider this, are they only on paper or do they really drive the work of the organization? Now, I'd like to hand this off to Lorna. Thanks, Melinda. Let's look at values-based leadership and at one of the definitions. If you turn to page three of your participants guide, you can fill in the definition as we move along. Values-based leadership is a philosophy that focuses on who we are and how we behave rather than the positional power we hold. It's about leaders that earn authority through example and actions so that people choose to follow. Remember, actions speak louder than words. So think about what kind of leader would you choose to follow? Think of a specific leader you would choose to follow. We've all had those kind of leaders. What are the attributes of this leader that made you want to follow them? Take a couple minutes to write down these attributes that come to mind in your participant's guide. So thinking about the attributes that you wrote down for the leader that you would choose to follow, 
Let's look at some other attributes. Values-based leaders set an uncompromising example demonstrating integrity. Selflessly serve and raise others in genuine humility. Values-based leaders show compassion by caring for others and developing their potential. They are purpose-driven, aligning with district and our school mission, vision, and values. They demonstrate courage and persevere to do the right thing. They are self-disciplined, holding themselves and others accountable. And they show gratitude and appreciation, acknowledging the contribution of others. In your participant's guide on page three, reflect on this question. Do these attributes apply to the leader you chose to follow? Now let's think about those attributes and think about yourself and your own work. Take some time to reflect on and record your thoughts. How do these attributes or do these attributes show up in your own work? Go ahead and record that in your participant's guide. Great. Now you're thinking about attributes of values-based leaders. Let's delve deeper into the values-based leadership model. Values-based leaders understand the current reality. They are able to define a clear mission and create a compelling vision for the school and or the school organization in which they work. They establish values that define behaviors required to achieve desired results. They establish a communication process to implement the mission, vision, and values and develop appropriate strategies. They live and model the values all day, every day. Be sure you've completed this definition in your participant's guide. Let's look at a dictionary definition of values. It can be defined as a principle or standard of behavior and or one's judgment of what is important in life. In the participant's guide at the bottom of page four, write your own definition of values. Think about your values and what would the definition of values be? Now reflecting on your personal definition of values, would that definition apply both at home and at work? So think about that for a minute. Your values, are they different at home than at work? Why or why not? Record your thoughts about that. So an example of that may be that you really value humor and you're a humorous person, but not at work. At work, you're very serious. You don't kid around with the teachers or the kids. That you think you really have a persona at work that is more serious. But at home, you really are humorous. You think you're the funniest person you've ever met. And that doesn't always translate between work and home. It could be one example of how your values may differ a little between one place and the other. So let's talk a little bit about where do we get our values? As I mentioned earlier, values differ from person to person, although there is a moral compass to consider. So let's consider where do we get our values? Social media, internet, place of worship, friends, music or books, TV or movies, home, family, school, teachers, peers. Thinking about the source of our values, think about when you were a child and where your values came from. Have they changed over time? How are the influences for values different on children today than they were for you? Reflect on this question in your participant's guide on the bottom of page five. Let's look deeper at values. So if you can visualize an onion, think about an onion and how many layers an onion has. But you can only see the outer layer until you cut into the onion. You don't really know if the onion is rotten or bad inside until you cut it open. Well, we're like that as people. The difference is we cannot cut people open to see if they are good or bad inside. So let's peel back the layers of the onion or the layers of our values and how that resonates within us. So the inside of the onion or the middle of the onion is the core and that's our values. Our values are at our core. The next layer, moving out toward the skin, 
are your beliefs. So your values drive your beliefs. The next layer would be your attitudes. So your values drive your beliefs that affect your attitudes. The outside layer, the skin if you will, are your behaviors. This is the only layer that people can really see. Others can't cut you open like an onion to see your attitude, beliefs, or values. They only see your behavior and make judgments about your attitude, beliefs, and values based on what they see, based on your values. Remember earlier, we've mentioned a couple times that actions speak louder than words. So values, beliefs, and attitudes and behaviors are all connected. Behavior can be seen, heard, and observed. Values, beliefs, attitudes cannot be seen, heard, or observed. But behavior is caused by our values, beliefs, and attitudes. Therefore, all these are important. Let's look at some companies, and it's interesting how they reflect their values and what you see. So let's look at the FedEx symbol. What's hidden in the FedEx symbol? Look closely. And if you look closely between the E and the X, you'll see an arrow. And the arrow could connote forward direction, speed, and precision. That's what FedEx wants you to think about when you notice the arrow. Let's look at Wendy's. Look at the picture of Wendy. What's hidden in the picture of Wendy? If you look closely, her collar spells mom. Famously founded by Dave Thomas, the Wendy's brand identity highlights a personal and home-cooked feeling. Let's look at Baskin Robbins. Love Baskin Robbins ice cream. What's hidden in the Baskin Robbins logo? The 31. And Baskin Robbins says the 31 stands for their belief that our guests should have the opportunity to explore a fun new ice cream flavor every day of the month. So let's start looking at your own values. And here are some questions to consider. What are your most deeply held values and do you live by them at all times, good or bad? How do these values shape your beliefs? What principles guide you as a leader? What is the quality and integrity of your written and spoken work? What behaviors do you exhibit for others to see that are congruent with your values? Spend a few minutes thinking about these. Let's explore these questions more in depth. In your participants guide on page eight, there's a list of values. I want you to go through that list and in two minutes, circle or check all the values that are important to you. Out of the values you checked or added, I want you to choose the top 10 most important values to you. I'll give you 90 seconds to do this. Again, circle the top 10 most important values to you. Okay, now I'm really going to challenge your thinking. I want you to narrow your list to your top five. So if someone asked you what were your top five values, what would they be? Which of these five values are the most important to you? Take a couple minutes to look at that. So now you should have your five most important values. I want you to write these down somewhere or remember them as you will need them in part two of this webinar. Let's start talking a little bit about your leadership story. So leadership begins with self-awareness. So what story do you or would you share with others about how you came to be in your current leadership position? What would the beginning of that story look like, the middle, the final steps, and what core values define the leader you aspire each day to be? On page nine of your participants guide, we're gonna start creating your leadership story. So as you create your leadership story, how would that story begin? What would be the first part of your story? And then I want you to think about how would that story end? Where are you now and how did you get to where you are today? And then think about what happened in the middle that propelled you from your beginning to where you are today. 
So I want you to start writing down your leadership story. The boxes on page nine may not be enough room. I would imagine you would need to expand on that, maybe use the back of that page. So I'm gonna give you about five to seven minutes, a good chunk of time, to kind of start writing down your leadership story. So take some time to do that right now. If you finish this activity, it's not gonna be a final product. It's just a start. In the last couple minutes, I want you to really consider your core values for your leadership. Do they align to your five values that you chose on the previous activity? Take a few more minutes and really reflect on that. I'm sure you have a great start on this story. So now for a little homework. I want you to share your leadership story with at least five other people and continue to refine it before we get to part two of the webinar. Also, on the resource hub, there's an article titled, The Only True Leadership is Values-Based Leadership. We'd like for you to read and reflect on this article in preparation for part two. Wow, Lorna, they've made it to the end of webinar series part one. They ensure they have done a fabulous job. They've got a good start on values and what their values are and starting to work on their leadership story and how that's going to evolve. I'm so excited. I can't wait for them to start on the second part. I know. We'll I'm looking forward to it. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. The Office of Leadership Development and School Improvement would like to thank you for participating in the Leadership Preparation Virtual Webinar Series. We hope you found this particular webinar informative and beneficial to your work as you prepare as a leader. To access the webinar series and find additional resources, please visit the Maryland Resource Hub. The Maryland Resource Hub can be located at MarylandResourceHub.com. That is M-A-R-Y-L-A-N-D-R-E-S-O-U-R-C-E-H-U-B dot C-O-M. We appreciate your feedback and would ask that you take a moment at this time to complete the SurveyMonkey link or use the QR code. The feedback that you provide to us will inform our work in the office as we develop additional resources to support you in the field. Again, thank you very much for your time in completing the feedback. As a reminder, the continuing professional development credits are available to you for this leadership preparation webinar series. To receive one credit, you will need to view five webinars, parts one and two, and complete three hours of experience for the webinar. That would include the pre-work, viewing the webinar, and completing the participant's guide, as well as extension activities related to the webinar. To receive two CPD credits, you will watch all 10 webinars, parts one and two, and complete three hours of experience per webinar. Again, it would include the pre-work, viewing the webinar and completing the participant's guide while watching, and extension activities related to the webinar. After you have completed the work, you will then submit all of the materials to the Google Form link listed. If you need to contact us with any questions for any reason at the Office of Leadership Development and School Improvement, you can contact Ed Mitzel, Executive Director at edmund.mitzel at maryland.gov. That is E-D-M-U-N-D dot M-I-T-Z-E-L at maryland.gov. Or Dr. Lori Ellis, Coordinator for Leadership Development at lori.ellis at maryland.gov, that is L-O-R-I dot E-L-L-I-S at maryland.gov.